Welcome, today we're going to discuss six questions to keep in mind before using a third-party API. Intro. Alright, before you actually start using a third-party API, you actually want to keep these six questions in mind because it will allow you to design a better back-end or front-end if you're utilizing the APIs directly. Alright, first things first, documentation, documentation, documentation. There is nothing worse than going to a restaurant and the menu doesn't really satisfy the eye and you don't know where things are the burgers over here, the fries are over here. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, documentation. Make sure that it's well written. Make sure that when you go through the third party API, they have example responses. They have examples on what queries to use, whether to use query parameters, whether to use URI parameters, whether it uses JSON bodies, all these other kinds of responses. Just make sure you actually take a look. Sometimes it may not be REST API. Maybe sometimes it's going to be GraphQL. Maybe it's just going to be an SDK. So just make sure to look at the documentation that is well written and that is going to be useful while you design your backend and front-end applications. Two, rate limits. Seriously, make sure you pay attention to rate limits, whether it's daily rate limits, monthly rate limits, and of course, the ones that we care about, how many calls I can do per second, how many calls I can do per minute, because I want to hammer that nail into that API so that I can get the most freshest response that they can give me. But make sure to actually take a look because sometimes the rate limits may be like maybe two calls per second. Maybe it is two calls per minute. It all depends on what they provide and also what tier of payment you're actually providing. Some APIs are paid and they have like tiers of payment. So they may allow you only like, you get 500 requests per month They pay or a thousand requests per month. But if you want to use 10,000 requests per month, you have to pay more. Just make sure that you actually keep a lookout for that because depending on that, the budget for your project may not merit that API. You may have to find something that is equivalent to the kind of data that they provide. So just keep that in mind. Numero tres, authentication. Make sure that you have the right key to open that castle door. If not, you will get denied. So make sure you actually look into whether they utilize bearer tokens, whether they utilize just access tokens, whether you need to do OAuth. That's basically, well, there are a lot more, but make sure you take a look at it because that's very important. If you don't have the right authentication methodologies, you're not gonna be able to get access to that API. Four, four, <laughs> testing. That is so important. A lot of people tend to utilize REST APIs, GraphQL APIs, basically any kind of a third-party API, and they don't try to figure out testing methodologies. Does the API host provide sandboxes? Because testing is very important when you're writing your applications. You want to make sure you actually test getting sample responses and utilizing your business logic against the sample responses and make sure that you're actually properly consuming it before you go to production in lower environments, dev, stage, or whatever environment you call it. Make sure you ask if they have sandboxes. If you don't test your code, it will leave you behind and alone, broken forever. That serious. Refresh rates. Number five. The idea here is that you actually want to check how often the data gets refreshed. If the data doesn't get refreshed very often, then you can cache and make your front end and back end super, uber, uber fast, like super fast. Anyways, sometimes the API data may not get updated maybe once a week. They may get updated once a month. Maybe it gets updated once every 30 minutes. You want to cache that data and make everything fast. If the API data gets updated like six times a second, 
Basically, caching is useless there because the data will get invalidated very, very quickly. So make sure you take a look at refresh rates. Number six, this has to do everything with the speed. Make sure you actually keep track of that. If a response maximum delay time is 60 seconds, you want to make sure your front and back end account for that. This is very important. Some people don't really care about the, the actual response. For some reason, they're like, oh, whatever, I'll get something. But what if it times out? How do you respond to that? How long does it take to time out? Does it take 10 minutes to time out? Maybe it takes 60 seconds to time out. It could be disastrous to not pay attention to how fast are these APIs before you start writing your backend and front end applications. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so that you can keep notifications of next time that I post something. That sounds right. I don't know. See you guys later.